day of the week, I always train glutes and hamstrings. And I like to start every glutes and hamstrings workout with hip thrust. I like to do them on the Smith machine. I used to do them with the barbell, but let's be real, the setup alone is its own workout. The reason why I start with hip thrust is number one, because I want to get them out of the way. And number two, because I always want to start with my heaviest exercise or the exercise where I want to lift the most. I always make sure to match the end of my bench with the Smith machine because then I know every single time where I have to put my bench. So because I'm very small, the bench is obviously way too high for me, so you can do two things. The first thing is to just take a plate and sit onto the plate, or you do it like me and just sit on your foot pretty much and put your shoulder blades onto the bench. Keeping your chin tucked at the top of the movement squeezing your glutes but not arching your back. You don't need to go all the way up because then you're getting lower back pain. There's also two variations that you can do with hip thrust. So number one, you can do a little bit more of a motion where you move your entire upper body. Or what I actually do prefer is a little bit more of a scooping movement because I feel like I can feel my glutes better. Should have maybe tried that without the weight on. I usually like to do three sets, which the first set is a warm-up set, but I do a heavy weight, but where I know that my form is correct. And then I do two very heavy sets where I really struggle on my last one to two reps, barely being able to finish it, so really pushing myself. So we're also on the first exercise. So we still have a lot of energy. Second set, I put on a little bit more weight and I thought I would change the angle, even though on a Smith machine it is so hard to get any angle where you can see the entire movement and where you can see that I'm in a 90 degree angle. Shoulder blades onto the bench and then feet are a little bit more than shoulder width apart. We want to have a 90 degree angle when we're on top of the movement. So we're breathing in and then breathing out when we're on top and squeezing the glutes. One, two, three. <laughs> Next, I like to do some sort of a single leg exercise. Usually, I always do Bulgarian split squats, and I also like to do them on the Smith machine because I think it's just so much easier to focus on the movement and not just with the dumbbells where you pretty much all the time have to focus on your balance. And also, I feel like it is so much harder to hold the dumbbells in your hands. I also like to do a little test before putting on some weight and just see how the movement feels. I always like to start off with my weaker leg, which is my right leg. So my right leg is my working leg and the other one is on the bench resting. I like to put the barbell not on my neck, but a little bit below that. Elbows back, breathing in, going down, pushing up only with your working leg and making sure that you can really feel the movement in your glutes. Okay, other leg. I also don't lock my knee out at the top of the movement, like I don't go all the way up. I stop right here where I can still feel the tension of the movement and then go back down again. Switching the leg is also so easy with the Smith machine because you can just stand with one leg and make sure that you are at the exact same place with the second leg. Next we're doing barbell RDLs, which is usually my second exercise after the Smith machine hip thrust, depending on how busy the gym is. Like today, I like to do the Bulgarian split squats on the Smith machine first, making sure that I can do both exercises on the Smith machine because it is a very popular machine and then the chances of it being taken afterwards they are very high. <laughs> Barbell RDLs you can do them with dumbbells if you are a beginner if you don't feel comfortable doing it with the barbell I do prefer the barbell I just feel like when I do it with the barbell I can hold the weight better. First I always like to do also a little test just making sure that the form is correct and don't do this always I, I skip it a lot of times but let's do the test. All you want to do is you want to just move your hips back getting your stretch in your knees you don't have to go too low because otherwise your back will take over and you will get lower back pain so I go a little bit below my knees or on my knees pretty much feel the stretch in the glutes and then pulling back up with the glutes not fully like we don't want to be arching here I still want to keep the tension in my glutes when going up before going back down again. Here's my stretch and then 
pulling up again. Push your hips back. Pulling here, really squeeze your glutes and going back up again. Making sure that your core is engaged. If you feel uncomfortable doing this in the middle of the gym or you don't want to do this with the barbell, you just want to do it with the dumbbells and you don't know how to push your hips back, you can do this leaning against a wall and touching the wall pretty much. I also start with a moderate weight, so I don't go in with the heaviest weight. I still want to make sure that my form is correct. I use lifting straps because I cannot hold the barbell. One, two, three. Okay, <laughs> the weight does feel heavy today, but I still want to add a little bit of weight, see if I can hold the form. Maybe only do six reps instead of eight reps. For the last set, I usually like to do, depending on how heavy I go, only do like four or six reps, because this is how you get used to a new weight. You take a little bit of more weight, then you do a little bit less reps and then build your way up until you can do the eight reps and then you do heavier weight or more reps, but I don't like to do more reps to be honest. Okay, next set. Let's try the heavier weight. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's heavier. So for the last exercise, what I like to do is finish my workout off with some hyper extensions. Sometimes when I have a little bit of extra time or if I'm in the mood for it, I also love to do hamstring curls, either lying hamstring curls or seating hamstring curls in a superset with the hyper extension because you really, really, really burn your hamstrings. And I, I personally really love that. Like I said, when you're short in time, I only do my hyper extensions because this is the perfect exercise to burn not only your hamstrings, but if you do them glute focus, also your glutes. I like to finish my glute workout with an exercise that is very focused only on the glutes. So you can also do cable kickbacks I personally am not the biggest fan of cable kickbacks. You can do frog palms, you can do the abduction machine, just a very glute focused exercise. What I like to do is my toes pointing a little bit outwards. My hips are above that. I'm a little bit arched and I usually have to wait like here. This is the starting position and then I pull up with my glutes until I can feel the stretch. You do not have to go anywhere up here. You can do that if you want to train your back, but I want to really just focus on my glutes, you know? Holding the weight, I like to hold it here. If you've never done this exercise, don't feel any pressure to take any weight. I would say just start with your body weight because it's gonna be hard enough. And then you can do like 2.5 kg or 5 kg plates and work your way up. Hyper extensions always burn so bad. That was the gluten hamstring day. Finally. For the second day of the week, I am training upper body. Since I only work out three days a week at the moment, I cannot do one day dedicated to back and biceps and one day dedicated to chest, triceps and shoulders. So I have to combine both. And I start off every upper body day with my resistance band chin-ups. Chin-ups, not pull-ups, because I cannot do pull-ups. So I always use this bench because I am just way too small <laughs> and then it's always very awkward to get into the resistance band so I do chin-ups which is like this pull-ups would be like this we're doing the easier version <laughs> And I do three sets until failure because until failure for me means four reps, five reps on a good day. Next, we're doing my favorite back exercise of all time, which is a lat pull down. I have my thumbs pointing outwards, making sure that my arms do not take over. Then shoulders down, engaging your core, and then pulling it down to your chest, holding it for a moment, and then going back up again.
Really squeeze your lats, your back muscle, and make sure that you always have the tension, like you don't want to lose it. You really want to have the tension in your back muscle throughout the entire exercise. I like to be more like in an upright position here and then lean a little bit back. But what I don't do is I don't like swing into the back. I know some people like to do that. I'm here and I go a little bit back. For the second set, I'm taking a little bit more weight, which also means I am using my lifting straps. For the longest time I always used to feel so bad for using lifting straps because then people say your wrists don't get stronger if you use them, they just get weaker. But I'm not here to train my wrists. <laughs> I'm here to train my back. If you feel like you can lift more, but you cannot hold it with your hand and the entire movement, you always just focus on your hands. For example, when I do lat pull down and I don't use my lifting straps, I can feel it so much in my arm. It only hurts here and I cannot really focus on my back. No bad feelings about lifting straps here. Next, I'm doing a superset. I want to have as many exercises as possible on this day because I only have one day dedicated to upper body. And this is also why I love to do supersets on an upper body day because it saves you so much time. And even though I have a lot of exercises on my upper body day, this workout only takes me one hours. I'm doing the superset on the cable machine for my back and what I like to do is a straight arm pull downs and then I like to do face pulls. Technically it's also shoulder exercise but I count it as a back exercise even though I just realized it doesn't matter because we're doing upper body day it's not a back day okay. Starting about here and then really squeezing your back muscle focus on squeezing that back muscle and then going back up again not losing the tension and pushing down. Since we're doing a superset, we're doing both exercises back to back without any rest. And I like to do my cable face pulls seated because I feel like I have more control if I have my feet against something instead of standing. And I have my thumbs always pointing towards my face. I don't know, I just prefer holding the rope like this. Pulling it to my forehead, squeezing my back shoulder muscles, because these are the ones that we're training, and going back up again without losing the tension. And since we're doing a super set and we are short in time, we only do two sets for 10 reps. Because you're already combining these two exercises, like your back and your back shoulders are already burning, there is no need in doing three sets. If you do have a little bit more time, you can do three sets. We're moving on to shoulders, which is probably my favorite part of my upper body day. We are doing shoulder presses, seated shoulder presses. I have my bench, not completely upward, like in a 90 degree angle, but a little bit bent backwards, like the first, what is it called? The first thing you can set the bench onto. I am very weak on my shoulder presses in general, probably even weaker today because number one, I didn't sleep a lot, and number two, I didn't have a lot of upper body days lately. The progress on my shoulder presses is a little bit embarrassing. We're only doing 10 kgs, okay? One thing very important for the shoulder presses is to not be like, anywhere here in the back with your shoulders and then pressing like this because this is probably gonna hurt a lot but to be a little bit more in the front not here here okay we can do a little bit more than that i'm taking the 12.5 kg i remember that one time where i thought i can really do the 15 kg and 15 kg is not a lot i couldn't even do one rep i'm doing three sets of eight reps although the eight reps i usually do on my first two sets and then on the last set i'm usually seeing how much i can do if it's four reps it's four reps if it's six reps six reps depending on the day okay one two three Oh my god. These were only four. <laughs> four more. Five. Six. Seven. Okay. 
Next we're doing probably my favorite superset of all time because I love shoulder pain and this is the best shoulder pain you will ever experience. It is lateral raises straight into front raises. I don't do lateral front, I do eight reps of lateral raises and then eight reps of front raises. Something for the lateral raises. We're not doing them like straight to the side, we're doing them a little bit in the front like so and then our pinky, is what it's called, it's like you're pouring something out. And what I like to focus on is holding it here and then slowly going back down again, really feel the tension, squeeze on top and then slowly going back down again. And the same goes for the front raises. Something that you tend to do if you take a little bit of a too heavy weight, also with the lateral, is to swing too much and not have the movement coming from your shoulders, like you really want to squeeze your shoulder you don't want to you know swing and throw your whole body around because that's that's not the purpose of the exercise and the same goes for the front races like you don't want to be swinging it you really want to stand have your core engaged and just go front and then going back down again and really control the movement control the movement instead of swinging it and focus on your shoulders or on the muscle that you want to work let's do this Squeeze, slowly going back down again. Squeeze, slowly going back down again. Moving into the front raises. And for the last exercise for my upper body day is also a superset. Who would have guessed? A bicep superset. So that not only our back and our shoulders are already on fire, but also our bicep. I do regular bicep curls. 8 reps and then I move straight into hammer curls. Also 8 reps depending depending on how much I can do that day. So I'm aiming for 8 reps but if it's only 6 reps it's also fine. Squeeze your triceps on the bottom of the movement and then curl really with your biceps. Not just swing it around with your whole body like this. Really focus on your biceps. And then straight into hammer curls. Okay. Oh my gosh, I cannot even do two reps. As you can tell, it's not only my shoulders that are weak, it's also my biceps. And that was it for my upper body day. For the third day of the week, I'm doing full body because I want to make sure that I'm hitting legs twice a week, even though I'm not someone who enjoys a leg day. So the only reason I want to hit legs twice a week is because I want to grow my booty. And then because I do enjoy upper body so much, I also want to have a second day where I can implement a little bit of upper body. I've never done this before. I was always a very strict four day split type of person where I had push and pull split like my two upper body days and my two separate leg days. One more glutes and hamstring focus, one more quad focus. But if you are more short in time and you can only make it three days a week to the gym, well, you have to kind of live with a full body situation. So what I like to do is I started off with my leg exercises and then at the end of the workout so that we can you know, get it over with, have the worst part in the beginning, and then we're doing a little bit of upper body. I'm starting my full body with probably my least favorite exercise of all time, which is barbell squats. Definitely not necessary, but I always like to start off with the bar, especially today because I haven't been squatting <laughs> in a while. We are putting the bar not on our neck, like up here. We're putting it a little bit below that or if you want to you can also have even lower placement but I like to have the bar just here. We're standing a little bit more than shoulder width apart, elbows back, breathing in, going down into a 90 degree angle, pushing up with your heels Reading out. So some of my favorite squat tips for avoiding lower back pain, avoiding any knee pain is number one, having your elbows back at the beginning of the movement and also breathing in because this makes sure that your core is engaged and that you're not gonna hurt your lower back. And then you go into your 90 degree angle. I know a lot of people like to go lower than that. I like to stop with the 90 degree angle here. I know some people like to go a little bit lower than that. And when I'm down here, I like to push up with 
my heels again through my glutes because squats are a weird exercise. I cannot always feel your glutes. And also with your knees, trying to push them out a little bit when you're going up, you're going to feel your glutes a lot more. So let's do a working set. One, two, three, elbows back. Lighting is awful, but I think this is the best I can get. Next exercise is one of my all-time, all-time favorites, which is the leg press. There are many different stances on the leg press. I personally always do a very regular, normal stance. You can totally do a higher stance, which is more glute-focused. You can do a narrow stance, which I also sometimes like to do because, I don't know, I feel like it burns different every time. But usually I have a regular stance like this. And something that I like to do is I don't go like super far in with my legs. If I go too far down, I can always feel it in my hip and in my lower back. So if you have any issues with your hip or your lower back when you are on the leg press, maybe stop a little bit earlier. Not going all the way like to your chest. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this actually hurts. But having something like where you can feel the burn like here for me going back up again also make sure to not lock your knees out oh this weight is very heavy to explain anything not caving in with your knees making sure that your knees are straight really push yourself into your seat Next we have cable step-ups. You totally don't have to do step-ups on the cable machine if you don't want to. But I just think it is the easiest setup because you don't have to find any high box or anything where you can step on. I just use a regular bench and also something that I really like when you do this on the cable machine is that you have something where you can hold on with one hand. Biggest tip for the step-ups is find something, even if it's not a cable machine, where you can hold on to because then you have more control over the movement. I take this bench which has the perfect height for the step-ups and then I can hold on to with the same hand as my working leg. Also, always start off with your weaker leg. For me, this is the right leg, so I'm starting off with the right leg. Hold on to the cable machine. You really want to make sure that you're not just swinging up with your other leg, because the other leg is not your working leg. This is just for assistance. Push with your glutes on this leg. One, two, three. Breathing out. And this is a very slow and controlled movement. So you're going back down very slow again. About here, until you can feel the stretch. So you don't have to go anywhere far down, just until you can feel the stretch in your glutes. Going back up again. Okay, so we're moving finally on to a little bit of upper body. And what I like to do is I like to do supersets. I'm doing a little bit of chest and triceps because I'm not hitting this on the other days. I like to do dumbbell chest presses. You can also do this on the bench, on the, like with the barbell. And then I do a superset with skull crushers. And honestly, skull crusher is an exercise that I avoided for the longest time because I always felt like I was doing them wrong. But now it's one of my favorite triceps exercises because it just burns so much better and when you do them on the cable machine sometimes when i'm in the mood or when i have a little bit more time i also like to do like cable chest flies or i do triceps push down on the cable machine but for today i'm only doing chest presses skull crushers and then we're done shoulder blades down i like to start in this position pressing up like this going back down to the side Breathing out and top and going back down again. For the skull crushers, because I never knew where to put my arms, but you basically are just here at your chest, like not somewhere up here, which I did in the beginning. And then all you want to do is move your arms, making sure that your elbows stay straight. Pushing up with your triceps and not moving around here. And up again. That was my full body day.